So I started this channel in January just to help students and 3K subscribers. Shout out to all the original subscribers, the OG subscribers from back in the 200 days, the new subscribers and everybody who just benefiting from the channel. Blessings. How many subscribers were there when you first joined up? So what I want to talk about is vital to understanding the whole complete in the square picture. 3x squared plus 12x plus 6, this is like the general form of a quadratic and we converted it to the complete in the square form. Now we need to talk about what happens after you do this. What does CXC ask you? I'm going to lay out the eggs. I went through the last 14 years of past papers with a fine teeth comb and I sectionized every single thing that CXC can ask you about completing the square after you finish completing the square. So you're basically changing the general form into the completing the square form. Now you should know that a quadratic equation generally would look like this. It's a parabola. That shape is called a parabola. And the x and y axis will land down somewhere there. That's the y, that's the x, something like that. So pretend this is your x and y axis here. So there are some key things to consider. We want the point where it cuts the x axis, we want the point where it cuts the y axis, and we also want the minimum point. So you want one, we want two, and we want the roots, 3, the point where it cuts the x-axis. So that's all this video is going to be about. These are the things they will ask you after you have completed the square. They're going to ask you about the minimum point, the roots, or the y-intercept, where it cuts the y-axis. And also you should know, they could ask you to sketch the graph. But first they will ask you about this and then to sketch the graph. So this is like the final frontier in mathematics for you. This is like probably what students consider the hardest question in CXC. So let's break it down. Alright, so the most popular thing that they ask over the years is for the coordinates of the minimum point. Now keep in mind, you can have minimum point or maximum point depending on whether A is positive or negative. If A is negative, meaning if this number had a negative sign in front of it, negative 3, negative 3, that will mean the curve is upside down. It goes like this. But everything else applies the same. Same concepts. Why do I have these things like this? Okay, so the coordinates of the minimum point is negative h k. Where do I get this from? This is straight out of the completing the square form. So this number here stands for, let's remove this. This number here represents h in this example. This number here represents k in the example. So the coordinates of this minimum point would be, if I use this, negative 2 negative 6 that's the coordinates of the minimum point for this if i look at it on a graph this here will be negative 6 and this here will be negative 2 because that lines up to the minimum point so this is the first thing they can ask you first thing out of three but they don't leave it as simple as this now what they do sometimes is ask for each coordinate separately so they may ask you for k in this way k what is the lowest point the graph reaches? What is the lowest value? What is the minimum value of f of x? That's one. Minimum value of f of x. And f of x here means the graph. What's another way they can ask you for k? They can say the minimum value of the function. And they write out whatever the function was. Remember, the same thing applies if it was a maximum. Meaning if the curve was in x direction. So that's how they can ask you for k. K is the y value of the coordinate. K is the y value of the coordinate. So K represents the y value and negative H represents the x value of the minimum point. So let's see how they can ask you for negative H. So they can ask you for negative H which, is the, which represents the x value like this. What are the x values when f of x is at minimum all right now they wouldn't okay now i made a mistake this shouldn't be values value 
it should be singular it's always one value for the minimum point so this is the easy way they can ask you x value when f of x is at the minimum now the tricky way I've noticed they ask you this over the years is for the axis of symmetry so if they ask you for the axis of symmetry they mean the x value and this is what you write x is equal to negative h and instead of negative h you just put negative of whatever is in h so if they ask me for the axis of symmetry for this for this I would say x is equal to negative 2 that's the axis of symmetry now the next thing that you can be asked is for the y-intercept the y-intercept is simply the spot that the graph cuts the that the graph cuts the y-axis so this is the y-intercept here and the value of that in this case is 6 now there's a clever way they can ask for the y-intercept one time they asked give, give the value of f of x when x is equal to 0 and they mean the same thing when x is equal to 0 what is the value of f of x the function what is the value and 6 so that's the clever way they can ask for the y-intercept but mostly they will say state the y-intercept and the third thing they ask is to find the roots now what what are the roots let's go back to the graph we have this graph what are the roots of this equation the roots represent these two values here this is the value of x when f of x is equal to zero these two values so x1 and x2 all right so to find out x1 and x2 requires a bit of calculation the last two points you didn't need much calculation you could just pull it off of this but this one requires calculation let's use this as an example 3x plus 2 to be squared minus 6 to find this you'll need to let the equation be equal to 0 because you want the values of x when f of x is equal to 0 do not expand out this bracket you'll end back up with the quadratic equation it's already in a useful state here so this is what you do x plus 2 is equal to 6 I brought across the 6 so it, ch it changed the positive I still have this 3 to carry across so I'll put x plus 2 squared is equal to 6 over 3 then hey 6 over 3 is 2 so let's just do that then I want to get rid of this squared so I will say x plus 2 squared is equal to 2 but to get rid of this squared I'll need to square root both sides and if I square root both sides this disappears so this is x plus 2 the square disappears from here and this becomes the square root of 2 now since we're dealing with quadratics we want to consider the positive case and the negative case don't let this frighten you all this means is that whatever you found the square root of here we want a negative version of it and a positive version of it so x now is equal to bring across the 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 subtract 2 or you can write it like x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 so I admit this can look like a lot and you could be telling yourself you know what I don't really need that 3 max that bad I would just live without this no take some time and practice it you can do it it just looks a little frightening but you can do it it's not that tough would be negative 0 0.59 so to complete the equation we use x1 we use the negative value and we use the positive value and we get our answers to two decimal places this gives x1 and x2 now keep in mind this is the roots we are finding the roots of the equation this represents these two points so these two points we just worked it out to be negative 3.41 and negative 0.59 now there are other ways they can express interest in you finding the roots so some other ways they can safely to find the roots are values of x when f of x is equal to 0 or they can simply ask you to solve the equation all right so the three things they ask you after completing the square once again are to find the roots the minimum point and the y-intercept these three now 
when sketching the graph it's important to find the roots first so that you'll know where exactly your graph fits you all should, should know whether it's a minimum or a maximum point that you're dealing with if it's a minimum point find that next plot that in your graph and then line up your graph so that it cuts the y-axis at whatever your y-intercept point is remember if they ask for the axis of symmetry x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to negative h whatever h was in your case is that so i know this is one of the tougher lessons to break down you may need to watch the video again but put some effort and some grind into this so that you don't abandon your marks when it comes to completing the square so till next time 